We have this story from the Washington Examiner we brought up the other day, but we had a conversation on uh, the Culture War podcast this morning, youtube.com slash Timcast, check it out, about the fear of civil war with this upcoming election. Fortitude Ranch, which is a, uh, a network of off-the-grid prepper resorts, they describe it as, has issued a call to their, uh, to their members to come to these uh, uh, facilities on election day if they live in highly volatile areas. You know, and I'd, I'd asked Ian about it. Do you think, or I'd ask the, the panel, do you think that this is a, uh, they're just hyping it up because it's their opportunity to market when people are freaked out, or are they trying to intentionally downplay it out of fear that they don't want to spark a panic by saying, quick, everybody get to the bunkers, it's going down. Considering the story that we just saw, where the Fifth Circuit Court ruled that votes that arrive after Election Day are in violation of the law and the potential, and I say it's a potential because I don't know what happens, that this leads to a scenario where Kamala wins, but only by ballots received the next day in the, in the wee hours of the morning, much like Joe Biden did. And then Democrats claim victory, Republicans claim victory, and then we actually end up with some kind of no president scenario. I'm curious with you, Mike, here, what, what do you think we see especially considering everything you know about the deep state and the and the intelligence apparatus, how will they respond? And is there a potential for some kind of greater escalation? Well, if you play the Jamie Raskin clip, the very influential congressman around, you know, him gloating, it doesn't matter who Trump supporters vote for. They can vote all they like for Trump because the fact is we're going to stop it on January 6, 2025. We are going to simply not certify the election by invoking the 14th Amendment. So it doesn't matter. He can win the he can win the election. He's not going to get inaugurated because we'll stop him on January 6, 2025. Now, this is very interesting because it's a direct match of the Transition Integrity Project blueprint for the 2020 election, where they simulated an ability to stop going to be a clear to stop to, to stop a clear Trump win. By invoking, by provoking a breakdown of Congress on January 6th to stop the certification of the election. So I, I have the clip here. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not familiar with secular or whatever. I just, uh, ACLJ.org. I just uh, Googled it. It's going to be up to us on January 6th, 2025, to tell the rampaging Trump mobs that he's disqualified. And then we need bodyguards for everybody in civil war conditions, all because. The nine justices, not all of them, but simply do not want to do their job. What he has just said there is worse than what anybody, any words that were ever said by Donald Trump at that rally. Is he? So this is uh, at an event it, at that uh, something in Pro's bookstore. I believe it was in D.C. He said that they will not certify that they, that on January 6, 2025, they're going to assert that Trump is ineligible under the 14th Amendment, Section 3. And block him. You add into the mix the potential for Supreme Court disqualifying large swaths of votes that came in. They were cast way before Election Day, but arrived on November 6th. On the, how is the 14th Amendment? What what's on Section three? Like this, the text of the 14th Amendment is no state shall make or enforce any law which shall. Section three. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say 14th? It's it is 14th. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It is 14th. It's it's but, you you are, if you are in wage an insurrection against the United States, you're ineligible yeah, for office. That sort of thing. But, but nobody was convicted of that. <laughs> but, but listen to right. what he's, the way he teased it up, listen to how self-aware he is about um, the magnitude of this. He says, he's, he's insinuating Trump supporters are going to be pissed. They're going to be rampaging Trump mobs because to their shock and horror, he, when he wins the election, we're going to stop it on January 6th. So that's why we need this big military FBI apparatus in order to arrest them all to stop the civil war conditions that we know that we are going to provoke because we are going to rob them of the election at the 11th hour. We are going to stop the certification of a duly elected president for democracy. Right. And he's saying because because the Supreme Court did not rule that he's disqualified, it now falls on Congress to do it 14 days before inauguration. So you're saying this guy's getting marching orders from uh, international NGOs and things? It's a consensus building process, and Jamie Raskin is in the dead thick of it. They they war game this. They do consensus building meetings. If you follow Brookings or you follow the Atlantic Council Networks or you follow the Transition Integrity Project Networks or the nonviolent civic resistance movement networks, they've been war gaming this stuff for months. They war gamed it for a, 
almost almost an entire year before the 2020 election. It's the same group that's back again. You can pull up the Guardian article by Rosa Brooks just a few months ago that goes over this. So is your sense that on, say, January 20th, if Trump does win clearly in the election, is your sense that on, tw- on January 20th, uh, uh, Trump will be will be inaugurated or no? Well, if he wins on November 5th, it's going to set up this scenario that we're now, you know, talking about with, with Jamie Raskin. This period between November 5th and January 6th is going to be extremely intense. If Trump wins, you are going to see, my sense is that you will see street merit, street paramilitary left wing slash never Trump right even potentially. You're going to see, you're going to see this sort of be it summer of love, 20 summer 2020 style riot force start to break out on the streets. The media is going to portray them as pro-democracy groups who are protesting the illegitimacy of the Trump electoral college victory. You're going to see that. So that's going to shut down the country. It's going to start terrorizing people. It's going to start preventing people from being able to communicate. You're going to see pressure put on the social media companies, extreme pressure put on by the Justice Department, put on by the by the advertiser networks. You're going to see this crisis response. It's going to feel like this country is, you know, it's going to feel like the day after January 6th for two, for two months if Trump does indeed win the Electoral College in order for them to prime the pump for, the act, for, for their extraordinary actions on January 6th. So they're saying that because of the January 6th insurrection, that that somehow under the 14th Amendment means that he is not eligible to become president and that Congress will have to enact that? Is that yes. why they've spent so long over the last however many years to push the idea of insurrection in the media? Because for the public to fall in line with this, they have to believe, because they've been duly to- told by the mainstream media, that that is what happened, even though there was no prosecution for that, they'll just fall in line and believe now, it. Which is part of the reason yes, why yeah. they've been they've been pat why, why I said that the whole going back to calling Trump Hitler in the past week or so. The point of that isn't to convince people about voting; it's to to prime the landscape for people to feel like Trump is a danger. And now let's read Section Three of the Fourteenth Amendment: No person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States or under any state who having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as any member of this of any state legislature or an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid and comfort to the enemies thereof. But Congress may by a vote of two thirds of each house remove such disability. The important factor there is nowhere does it say a president can't be president if they waged insurrection. Many people argue that it says hold any office uh, and it says or as an officer of the United States, but that I believe the legal precedent so far was that does not include the president. And the reason for that was we have the 14th Amendment because of the Civil War. And the idea was you're not going to represent a state if you were uh, or or be in Congress if you were a part of these of this insurrection. But the, the president was different because to get elected president would mean that the union states would have a say in whether or not you were president in the first place. The argument is if uh, Virginia wanted to send a senator, the union says, nope, that person waged war against us. Get somebody else. Now, what if someone from Virginia who was involved in the Civil War wanted to be president? The argument is, well, OK, if New York votes for that person, that's a union state deciding. That's why it says a con- Congress made by a vote of two thirds of each house remove such disability. The reason why president was not included in this is because if union states voted for the person that is removing such a disability. Right. So this was this was argued quite a bit, but none of it matters. Tell me I'm wrong. Say, Tim, you're wrong. I say, OK, fine. I guess you're right. No one was ever convicted of any kind of insurrection or any kind of uh, uh, Trump was never convicted under J6. They they tried him in. in they tried. They impeached him and he was acquitted. We're done. It doesn't matter, though. As Red Yard Lynch said the last time he was on the show. Both sides believe they are morally justified and are simply looking for plausible deniability to, exa- to, to enact their force. Now, personally, I think right now, if Trump wins the Electoral College, he wins. But they've been repeatedly making the argument that, that the Electoral College is illegitimate and the Supreme Court is illegitimate. Why? Because Trump will likely get an Electoral College victory and then the Supreme Court will back him up when they challenge it. And then they're going to claim, aha, this proves it. It's illegitimate. All right. And they're simultaneously opening pressure on uh, potential Trump-leaning Supreme Court justices, the, you know these ethics probes against Clarence Thomas. Yep. They're you know they're opening up the lines of attack against Kavanaugh again. 
They're talking about the repercussions on the court and stacking it to basically try to put a kind of uh, conflict in the Supreme Court individual members' minds that if they go against this apparatus, uh, as this gets litigated, there will be personal consequences for them. Yeah, and you know, this people may think this sounds far-fetched, but Schumer himself said that, you know, if you go against the intel, the intelligence apparatus, they have nine ways to Sunday to take care of you or whatever. I don't remember the exact quote Six that he had. Six ways to Sunday, whatever. Yeah. But like, the point being, like, this isn't something that is a secret in Washington, even if they don't, even if people don't think that they would do it to the United States or they would do it here, everyone is pretty aware that CIA works in these ways in other countries. Like most people are aware that CIA has, has had effects on a lot of other countries' elections and the, the governments of a lot of other countries. Yeah, Thanks for checking out this clip from Timcast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel and we will see you all there.